Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya This is Canto 2, Chapter 3. Chapters entitled Pure Devotional Service, text number 15. Savai Bhagavato Raja Pande Pandayevo Maharataha Bala Kridan Akai Kridan Krishna Kridam Ya Adaye Savai Bhagavato Raja Pandayevo Maharataha Bala Krida Nakai Kridan Krishna Kridam Ya Adaye Savai Bhagavato Raja Pandayevo Maharataha Bala Kridan Akai Kridan Krishna Kridam Ya Adaye Thank you. 
Hmm, sa, he, by, certainly, Bhagavata, a great devotee of the Lord, Raja, Mahapurikshit, Pandayeva, grandson of the Pandavas, Maharata, a great fighter, Vala, wild a child, Kridanakai, with play dolls, Kridan, playing, Krishna, Lord Krishna, Kridam, activities, Ya, who, Adaye, accepted. I'm hearing about Maharaj Prikshit now. Maharaj Pariksit, the great uh, Maharaj Pariksit, the grandson of the Pandavas, was from his very childhood a great devotee of the Lord. Even while playing with dolls, he used to worship Lord Krishna by imitating the worship of the family deity. Hmm. In the Bhagavad Gita 641, it is stated that even a person who has failed in his proper discharge of yoga practice is given a chance to take birth in the house of devout brahmanas or in the houses of rich men like Kshatriya kings or rich merchants. But Maharaj Pariksit was more than that because he had become a great devotee of the Lord since his previous birth. And as such, he took his birth in an imperial family of the Kurus, and especially that of the Pandavas. So from the very beginning of his childhood, he had a chance to know intimately the devotional service of Lord Krishna in his own family. The Pandavas, all being devotees of the Lord, certainly venerated family deities in the royal palace of worship. Children who appear in such families fortunately generally imitate such worship of the deities, even in the way of childhood play. By the grace of Lord Sri Krishna, we had a chance to become born in a Vaishnava family in our childhood, and we imitated the worship of Lord Krishna by imitating our father. Our father encouraged us in all respects to observe all functions such as Ratha Yatra and the Doli Yatra ceremonies. And he used to spend money liberally and for distributing prasadam to us children and our friends. Our spiritual master, who was also took birth in a Vaishnava family, got all inspirations from his great Vaishnava father, Thakur Bhaktivinoda. That is the way of all lucky Vaishnava families. The celebrated Mirabai was a staunch devotee of Krishna, as the great lifter of the Govardhan Hill. The life history of many such devotees is almost the same because there is always symmetry between the early lives of the great devotees of the Lord. According to Jiva Goswami, Maharaj Pariksit must have heard about the childhood pastimes of Lord Krishna at Vrindavan, for he used to imitate the pastimes with his young playmates. According to Sridhar Swami, Maharaj Pariksit used to imitate the worship of his family deity by elderly members. <coughs> Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti also confirms the viewpoint of Jiva Goswami. So accepting either of them, Maharaj Pariksit was naturally inclined to Lord Krishna from his very childhood. He might have imitated either of the above-mentioned activities and all of them established a great devotion from his very childhood, a symptom of a Maha Bhagavat. Such Maha Bhagavats are called Nitya Siddhas or souls liberated from birth. But there are also others who may not be liberated from birth, but who develop a tendency for devotional service by association. They are called Sadhana Siddhas. There is no difference between the two and the ultimate issue. And so the conclusion is that everyone can become a sadhana siddha, a devotee of the Lord, simply by association of pure devotees. The concrete example is our great spiritual master, Sri Narada Muni. In his previous life, he was simply a boy of a maidservant, 
but through association with great devotees, he became a devotee of the Lord of his own standard, unique in the history of devotional service. Om hmm. Agyan Timidandasya Kinagjana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Sri Guruvena Maha Sri Chaitanya Manobhistam Staptitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadanti Swam Padanti Kam The Maum Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamani Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya De Sitarine Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasati Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hmm. So this centers around Maharaj Parikshit and his early childhood as being the foundation for his great devotion. Prabhupada is eager to make the point with many other personalities such as himself, his spiritual master, and Sri Narada Muni, who all had the opportunity to have devotional service when they were very, very small. Mm -hmm. So um, this is a important principle because whatever you do in the early parts of your life becomes the foundation for what will happen the rest of your life. Even if it doesn't become something that you're so consciously aware of, because in those early lives, they say children are impressionable. That means whatever you give them in the early age, they easily understand and absorb because they don't have any, what we say, otherworldliness or worldliness about them. So they can understand and accept things there's one story about one Greek educator. His name is Diogenes. And Diogenes was a, one of the best educators in the Greek tradition. And parents would bring their children to him for education. And so there was uh, one lady. She had approached him explaining she had a young boy and would like to enter him into the, his school. So Diogenes immediately responded, what is the boy's age? And uh, the lady responded, well, he is five years old. And Diogenes said, bring him immediately. We're already five years too late. <laughs> so this is very informative and very important to understand that, uh, of course, we're here with all brahmacharis mostly, but those especially who have our family, family members or will become family members, it becomes the responsibility of the parents to give uh, what we say the goal of life in the earliest part of the child's age. Uh, there's that verse from the fifth canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, spoken by Rishab Dave. Where's that? Guru Nasasyat, Janane Nasasyat, Pitin Nasasyat, Namochaye Sarape Vrnumityam. Don't become a mother, don't become a father, don't become a teacher, don't become a guru, unless you can liberate your children, students, disciples from the cycle of birth and death. So great responsibility is given upon the parents, upon the guru, upon teachers whose, other, whose lives of others are in their hands to direct them. That's why sometimes we would hear, Prabhupada would make this statement, you know, a child is born and immediately 
his whole life he starts to grow up learning about how to enjoy sense gratification. From the very early days, the children are giving all kinds of toys and some kinds of playthings and all kinds of things to eat as a way to somehow satisfy them, not knowing that actually this is like destruction of the good qualities of the young children, because at that age, they have so much that they can understand towards the goal of life. So this is a very essential for those who are in the position of responsibility towards others. And we can see, even now, for those of us who are practicing Krishna consciousness who didn't have that in the early days, and even now, in my own experiences, I see that people who come to Krishna consciousness, they have a very difficult time practicing it. Why? Because it wasn't there in the early days. And so to try to learn something when you're already grown up, something different, something new, and they say it's, there's an old saying in, in English, don't try to teach, uh, you know, new tricks to an old dog. <laughs> they can't learn. So it's very difficult. And we see in our temples, I know I have many personal experiences, people come, even now, and they have a hard time focusing their mind on Krishna consciousness. Only because they've never, all, they've never had that, what we say, proper upbringing. Their upbringing has been based on more or less uh, enjoying the senses in the early age. And you'll see sometimes, we even see, I even see that now, that sometimes we see children who are very young, they're very, very, uh, what we say, angry, spoiled. They cry when they don't get what they want. Sometimes they even cause trouble when they don't get what they want. They've been conditioned to get everything they want, and then when they don't get it, what happens? They become, well, we say angry, or even mischievous, like that. So these early ages are very impressionable. And uh, fortunately here, in this country, in this area, we might say communism was actually good, in one sense, it kept out the commercialism of the capitalistic world and people were more brought up in a more simple type of lifestyle. It was maintained throughout their life. And so that simplicity is actually a, a, a great feature of uh, success in executing devotional service. Uh, sometimes we find that people who are not brought in that, who come in from a very, what we say, highly industrial Western society, when they try to practice Krishna consciousness, Krishna's consciousness is so simple. Prabhupada said, it's so easy, you'll miss it. <laughs> it's really easy. There's nothing to it. Chant Hare Krishna. Read some books. Eat some nice food. Dance. And everybody has to do something. <clears throat> so, activities to perform. It's easy, really. <clears throat> but, because if people are conditioned in another way, they can't see of doing something for somebody else. They always have to think in terms of me. What am I getting out of it? What's in it for me? Why, you know, the, what's the, and then people, new people, when they come to Krishna consciousness, a lot of times they're saying this is another way to enjoy. That's fine, because Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Four kinds of people come to spiritual life. Those who are suffering materially, those who are looking for some kind of material gain, some money or some position, something. Those who are curious, and those who are actually looking for the goal of life. So the first two, those who are you know, struggling with the material world and think, well, let me go to spiritual life, maybe I can find a way out of this struggle. And that's good, because Krishna calls him Mahatma. And those who are sometimes looking for, and we see that even in 
many Western uh, ashrams, people come, they look for some material gain or how to develop material gain through spiritual practice. And uh, so when they become somewhat, uh, what we say, free from the suffering and free from the, um, what we say, the, uh, or they get some material gain in spiritual life, they go back out to the material world again. Because that's their goal, is to join the material world, and they use spiritual life as a way to get get material things. Okay. But then again, you have the two others who come, those who are curious, what is this spiritual life? What is it about? Well, what can I what can I learn from it? You know, they become interested. So they become interested in philosophy, and they also want to learn more and more. And so they can make advancement faster than the others. And of course, those who actually come to understand what is the truth of life, they immediately uh, absorb everything that's given to them in Krishna consciousness. So the motivation for coming to Krishna consciousness may be different. Of course, whoever comes to the right place for whatever motivation, is Krishna calls a Mahatma, or a great soul, but the idea is to come to the principle of understanding that it's all about Krishna. In other words, coming to understand that devotional service means to please Krishna. Devotional service means to purify the heart and ultimately awaken our natural attraction and love for Krishna. And so there is something in it for everybody, in Krishna and the living entities, but the motivation is that because, or the understanding is, because that we are part of Krishna, we can never be separated from Krishna, we can create this false sense of separation by developing the wrong mentality. Well, what do I have to do with God? You know, yeah. and then they identify with the material energy or with the material body. You can't see the understanding of their relationship with God. But that doesn't change anything. It's just like if you go to sleep at night, you're sleeping, you forget who you are during the day. You know, you are whoever you are. And then you're in a sleep state and you forget what you were doing, who you are, everything, when you enter into this state of... But that doesn't mean that changes. As soon as you wake up, you go back to what you were doing. So this material existence is like a, a sleep straight state. You know, we think we're something else. And therefore, we think that our own interest is to satisfy our own senses. But our real interest is to satisfy Krishna's senses. And when, by satisfying the senses of the Lord, because we can never be disconnected from Krishna, it's not possible. You can't break your connection with Krishna. It's eternal. It's not possible. Well, that is our nature. Nature means what's natural. So what is natural is to love and serve Krishna. Just like in a material world, what is the most natural thing is breathing. It's so natural, people don't even think about it, but do it all the time. <laughs> so in the same way, what is natural for us is to love and serve Krishna. That's our nature. But and when people reject that or deny it, they can't really get away from it because it's, it's, it's something that is intrinsic in their existence so but they can create this different mentality the Krishna allows that he allows you to think what you want to think he gives us freedom of the mind and then that in that way he allows us to choose and because that that is also a principle of our relationship with Krishna uh, he explains in the first chapter the first verse in the Bhagavatam that Krishna is swarat. Swarat means fully independent. And so because we are part in Krishna, we also are swarat to a small degree. We have independence also. But not like Krishna. Our independence is limited to what we can choose in life. We can choose the material life or we can choose the spiritual life. 
And then when we choose either one, then within those two categories of choice, then we choose how to live in each, each of those categories. So we can always make decisions and decide how we want to move forward, but we can't change our relationship with Krishna. That's, that's eternal. And that is foundational to what we say, happiness. So we find that people who are born in devotees' family, suchinam simbatam gehe yoga brascha prajayate, in previous lives, they have somehow or other executed devotional service, and now they're beginning again. And usually that is the case with people who are great souls. It's never their first life like that. So um, this may be our first life in Krishna consciousness. It may not be. Maybe we were a devotee in our last life, or maybe we were a, a great devotee in another religious tradition such as Christianity or Islam or Judaism. And then because we actually came in this particular time and we met devotees, we became a Hare Krishna devotee. But it doesn't mean we weren't devotees in our last life. We could have been of any tradition. So the important point is that, uh, that for those who are in a position of leadership, I and mean, those who are physician of followers, everything should be done in the earliest possible time. So even if that wasn't the case, still, still one can reach perfection, even though one didn't have it. Prabhupada says here, he mentions that, even those who didn't have that from their early childhood, if they become Krishna conscious, it's just as good as anybody, because Krishna consciousness is the same at any whether you reach it through sadhana siddha or you reach it through kripa siddha or you reach it through uh, what we say nitya siddha nitya siddha means eternally krishna conscious it doesn't matter because it's all krishna consciousness so for us uh, what is the most important point we can take out of this particular uh, presentation here is that uh, if we have responsibilities for helping others in Krishna consciousness that becomes um, an opportunity for making uh, great advancement in devotional service as Prabhupada said and this is very important to understand Prabhupada said you make advancement in devotional service by how much you take on responsibility to practice Krishna consciousness. In other words, what's your service? The more you take on responsibility for service, for activities, for others in your own relationship, the more you have the opportunity for spiritual advancement. Of course, there's also a limit where one should be careful not to take on more than they can handle. But the principle is that we should always be thinking how to do more service and how to do better service. It's both more and better. We see devotees who have been around our movement for many years and they're doing the same thing they did 20 years ago, practically not much. Therefore, they're not making any advancement because Krishna consciousness works in such a way as that you have to be seeing where you are and where am I going to go for my next step. As soon as you stop, you go back. And then you can go all the way back to your material life again, too. That's a possibility, because we hope that doesn't happen. But everyone should think, oh, what do I need to work on to make m m progress in my devotional service? It may not always be in a quantitative way by doing more service, but it could be in a qualitative way by impr improving the practice of the activities we perform now. So this is the mindset of a serious devotee, is that what can I do for Krishna? <laughs> when Bhakti Prabhupada said, I never asked so many questions to my spiritual master, but I asked him one question, how can I serve you? <laughs> and because... 
that question became the foundation of a worldwide movement. And Bhakti Siddhanta gave the understanding that to serve me means spread Krishna consciousness all. So Prabhupada only needed one instruction in life, spread Krishna consciousness. And he took it completely. So if we have a particular instruction given to us by our spiritual master in terms of how we should serve, if we go deep into that mood and develop it even more and more, that becomes the, what we say, the benefit of our spiritual advancement. To perfect your service, to what we say, uh, work and make it even better and better. And you see, the more you absorb yourself in service, the more ideas you get for service. When you're not serving, you don't get any ideas. Or if you're hardly serving, you can't even think, you can't even remember what to do from day to day. But if you're absorbed in service, all of a sudden you think, oh, wow, there's that over there. Yeah, this is a good idea. Krishna, Krishna's works through the devotee to give them more intelligence, more inspiration, and uh, more understanding. Now, this is Krishna consciousness like that. And you see that the idea is Krishna is trying to take us to the position where we're absorbed 24-7 in his devotional service. And that, then our life is perfect. And we have reached perfection in the practice of devotional service. Okay, and so we'll stop here. Any comments or questions? Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. uh, always same question uh, before. Uh, maybe one week I was asking from internet. Uh, did Dhritarashtra can do something different because uh, it's Krishna Lila, and you explain sometimes Krishna will and Krishna um, will say uh, give blessing. You can do, you know. You explain nicely this, but now you also said about. Uh, um, that, that human being not have so much independence. Uh, it's not uh, we can choose Krishna consciousness or not Krishna consciousness. But uh, I'm really confused with this karma. I, I, maybe I can show you by theater. Uh, you know our picture in our books. Um, uh, it's some man who like kill a cow, and cow have a man head, and right. a man have a cow head. And this is Mamsa. Okay, I must kill you, but you will kill me next life, and now change. This before cows, now is man. Did he have a, a freedom? I must kill, because my destiny, I must, my, my karma is that I must oh, yeah. do that. Oh, yeah, okay. What you're speaking about is the difference between free choice and karma, right? Right. We have our karma that's pushing us in a certain direction, and then we have our free choice at every minute. Mm -hmm. But the strength of our karma will also cause us to think and act in a certain way. But your free choice is never lost. So the example is given. You, well, you can use an example of driving in a car. So if you're driving in a car and you're going, say, 40 miles an hour, I mean, that's a little fast. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jai Shishi Gornetai. And you, uh, you're driving 40 miles an hour and then there's a curve in the road. If you don't slow down, you can, yeah, you can roll over or you can make it, it would be very difficult to make the curve, you know. So that example is like the speed we're going in one direction is our karma. And the curve is now the opportunity to choose. So we say sometimes we have to understand you have to slow down in the certain way you're going, in the karmic way, in order to make a move in a different way that will be successful. This is an example. So in the same way, we are pushed certain to, to a certain degree by our karma. 
but then we still have this intelligence. So taking our intelligence and applying it to the situation we're in, we can say, oh, my tendency is to do this, but I know by scriptural evidence, by guru's instruction, this is, not, this is something I should avoid. So it may be that some, for some people can't do it because of the strength of that push. And this is called virida dulabya, which is mean weakness of the heart. I know I should do something different, but I can't. Yeah, because of my attachments and because of my affection, like that. Just like Prabhupada would use the example on the cigarette pack, it says if you smoke, you get lung cancer, emphysema. For women, complications in pregnancy. Now they don't write that anymore. They write smoking kills right on the package. I mean, bold letters. That's where you can see the the boxes now. Smoking kills. Still, people smoke. They still do it because weakness of heart. They're still pushed by that attachment. And they know if they stop and think, this is bad for me, then that causes confusion in their life. So they don't even want to think about it. They just want to go ahead with their desires. So that's our put, that's our karmic push that comes by way of attachments and association. So to break that, we need proper association and intelligence coming from higher sources. And gradually, depending on how strong that karmic push is, we can gradually reduce that and eliminate that. And we have the example, each one of us can see when we first came to Krishna consciousness, we, are, we were a certain way, but we're different now. We've made some advancement, we made changes in our life. So that carries all the way up until we actually become purified. That makes sense. The second one, this one, uh, it's pushing him. Uh, I must kill. I must kill. But I look devotees around. Okay, I have freedom. I will then. I will not kill. Hmm. But what now in uh, person B? What's supposed to be killed because by their karma, they also uh, benefit hmm. or uh, somehow this somebody must else. Be? Somebody else. Will somebody come. else. <laughs> <laughs> They'll get their karma anyway. <laughs> you won't be the one to give it. Somebody else will give it. <laughs> you have to save yourself. <laughs> okay, yes. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Thank you for lecture, Your Holiness. By, by reading and by your lecture, the understanding came up that Krishna guarantees a birth guarantees again. A, a, a birth again well if you don't make it in this life yeah. then you get another birth you get another birth anyway so, but you get another birth in a devotional atmosphere depending on the strength of your krishna consciousness in this life now now this opens a little bit space for for a small freedom which can be poisoned by this fact that I can come again to life if I serve Krishna. Mm -hmm. And I can be poisoned by that. I can be like, okay, I'm going to serve you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come on this world anyway. So something can take, can take place and uh, a semen can take place, which is not good by that. So how, how, how to pure that, how to clean well, that? Can, well, that mentality is a deviant mentality because there's other factors that we have to understand and that is one what you don't what causes you to stay in this life causes you to take another birth will still be something you have to face in the next life whatever is blocking you from pure devotional service now will remain with you in your next life and then you start again and then you have to face that again so there's a chance that 
even in your next life, you can fall backwards because you didn't make progress. So we say, make it in this life, and that way you won't have to worry about the next life and, and be challenged by the same thing you're saying, you're, you're being challenged now. Overcome it now. You face it now. You got the, re, you got the uh, tools to deal, deal with it now. Don't look to the next life because anything could happen and you could go back again to material life again. Just like you have your choice at any time you'll still have your choice in the next life to fall backwards. So it's not like you can postpone your advancement to the next life and say, well, I'll make this much advancement in this life. No. Material energy is always pushing the, con the living entity towards material activities. That's why devotional service means making an effort to advance. We have to always be making that effort. If we're not making the effort, there's no sitting on the fence. The wind will blow you one way or the other, depending on your desires and your association, really. Most important thing is if you want to be successful in Krishna Conscious Association, you have to have good association. There's where you're the foundation for everything you do in Krishna consciousness is, is association. So just like now you're going to eventually go back to your place in Serbia. First thing you do, association. Where am I going to get devotee association? That's the first thing you should be looking towards. And then you'll continue to make progress in Krishna consciousness. As soon as you take materialistic association, guaranteed you'll go start going back to material habits activities and ultimately material life everything is based on association because in there is the ingredients for what we say developing the same mentality as that association hmm. he's an old saying tell me who you associate with, and I'll tell you who you are, <laughs> based on association. <laughs> so, yeah, but it's we can't postpone our Krishna consciousness to next life. <laughs> it's dangerous. <laughs> yes. Hare Krishna, you were speaking about uh, devotees who have been in the society for quite long, but they're not moving anywhere, and they are not making progress, and they are not willing to take instructions from anyone. Is there, how do we say, a cure for that? Does it exist? Can such a situation be helped somehow? What causes that person to be in that situation could be a number of factors. If we can overcome the cause that allow that to happen, then you can start to bring that person back. Um, sometimes we see because of being mistreated by other devotees or not getting the proper treatment that they should have gotten, they went away. So then, what will it take is Krishna consciousness friendship, re devotees reaching out to them and making them feel welcomed, making them again seem that they, you know, they're important, you know, come back to Krishna consciousness. It starts by developing relationships like that. Um, there's other reasons why people stop is because they run right smack into their material attachments and can't give it up. Krishna keeps showing you your material attachments. And then when you get to a certain point and you keep saying no to Krishna, Krishna says, all right, go on with your material life then. <laughs> Krishna will keep help, trying to help you in different ways, but if you keep refusing his help, after a while, 
the message doesn't come anymore. You told Krishna, don't, don't bother me. And then you'll go back. And then what saves that person is that if they have some crisis in their life, which causes them to wake up So, from different perspectives, what has caused a certain individual, we have to see what was the thing that really, what is their block in Krishna consciousness? And then try to work with that. It may be different. But generally, in, when we don't really know the situation, we invite people to take association. Because unless they do that, they practically won't move forward anymore. By coming to the temple, by being with the devotees, doing some service, chanting again, then gradually they might start to feel different and their experiences are nice now. So it's up to us to make sure people who do come back after being away for long, they get the they get a little extra care, a little extra attention, because that's required. I see you have more to say. I see you thinking about what I said. Hmm. Okay, is fine. Do we have anything else? Yeah. Mandata, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, Adata. Okay. Okay. So, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki, Gaur Pimanande, Hari Hari Bhav.